All right. Well, we'll kick it off. Yeah, man, kick it off. All right, you guys. I'm going to do the air do, 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 do that because I'm at a glass desk here and I don't want to break it. But hey, you guys, it's a comic book. Look at your boy, John on Demand, hanging out here with co CEO Thomas Devine. There can only be one. Happy Saturday, first of all. And you guys, we are up before noon. So we were on our best behavior last night. No shenanigans, no tomfoolery. No, um, no comic and- book hangovers here. None, none at all. Um, but happy to be here, you guys. Just kind of doing a fun issue. Uh, no idea what episode we're on, personally. I think Tom and I are both like, oh, we'll figure it out. Um, but still happy to keep it going. And hashtag the climb to 200 is real. It's uh, real. pretty sure it's 176. I put all of our it? backlog issues from Facebook onto YouTube. Um, yeah. So it's like 176, 177, something like that. But don't worry, you'll see it in the notes. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome, man. But uh, today we are just going to be talking about a big mystery package that Thomas got in the mail there. Um, And then also just some other fun things of what we've been up to. It's been a hot minute since we've had a chance to connect with you guys. Um, So just wanted to take some time to do that. But first of all, Tom, COVID-19 update. How is everything going? Well, everything's going good. Um, You know, the kids are winding up school. I'm starting to go back to a... The office, our office is about half full now, and we're just doing precautionary things there. We all take our temperature every single day, keep it logged, you know, do all the different distancing things that you can do at this time. And so it's, but it's nice to be back to work, seeing other people's faces. Um, I'll start going back. I'm doing about three days a week and I'll go back to full time next week. So I'm really stoked for that. I can't wait for things to, you know, go back to a more slightly normal Um, other than that, I'm also really excited. I heard May 20th or May 28th is going to be new comics again. So me and John are bringing you some new sweet love and comics. DC figured out that other way to do these Tuesday releases, but I don't read too many DC books. I don't know. Did you get any of those new books? (laughs) So I know that the first round that they did was like a third printing of Batman something. Batman and the Outsiders was one of the newer ones, which I'm not reading. So all of my titles that I do like Detective and Batman were not included yet except for like reprints so for me i'm kind of meh about it but Mm -hmm. excited for people to just have new comics on the comic wall i mean we'll take what we can get i suppose but totally yeah i'm gonna switch this up just because i mean i don't want to support just that random harley quinn book until we get into these packages guys (laughs) um that was just our tester book um (laughs) but yeah man uh i Exactly. You know, it was just such a small amount. I mean, like, you know, like I didn't make this trip in just for those books. I wasn't going to start picking up the flash, um, you know, for those books, but image will be dropping the rest, you know, with everybody else. I'm really excited for comics to get back. I'm going to be um, picking up heavy um, amounts of comics right away because I want to start supporting the comic shops um, like, you know, our boys at rainbow and so, you know, support your LCS, get back in there right away. Uh, you know, yep. safe while you do it. It's 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 easy to do. So, yeah. Um, what else is new, though, John? How are you holding up with COVID? Oh, man. You guys, it's been an adjustment. So I'm a big socialite. And so for me, the past two months have, Ken and I have been going crazy, to be honest with you. Um, but it's it's just been such an adjustment um, in terms of work in the same place, get off work. So I actually try to do my work work out in the living room and not in here. So that way this is still a fun space. And that way it just kind of respects the boundaries a little bit. Um, but it's, it's yeah. been interesting and it puts a lot of things into perspective. Like I really miss people. Cause there were days when I was in the office, like I'm really tired of everybody. Like I just want my space. Yeah. And then you get your space and space and you're like, okay, I kind of miss people now. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's funny how, that you know it takes something like this to help bring that message you know but um it's it's an adjustment for sure and i'm just curious to see how things you know end up being but uh yeah to your point with lcs's i am very uh thankful that rainbow you know is awesome and hanging in there and that's all thanks to the awesome community that we have here in sioux falls um in the surrounding areas um and and to the guys at the shop too um so every time we go there it's just like you know, you're just, you feel welcome and everything. I just love that, you know? So that's my favorite part about going is just checking in. Sometimes I buy lots of stuff and sometimes I buy just a couple things. Um, it, but it's just fun to hear how everyone's doing and, you know, the Johns and Derek and Brian. So 
And, and of yeah. course, CEO Presidente David. So yeah, Dave's been in the last two times I've been in there. I yeah. I've been able to slip away a little bit. I got a good stack of you know some stuff that I needed to catch up on, fill some holes after I organized my comics um, recently. Um, so yeah, the, definitely, dude. Um, you know, have you found yourself reading like other things during um, this COVID times, being at home more, like reading more or reading oh, less? Yeah. Your, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> first of all, yes, I have been reading different things. Second of all, I have, I like I said, I have backlogs of things. So like Detective, I've actually yeah, just I, read. I said that because I saw you tweeted that you started reading Detective, and I was like, oh snap, he's gonna binge them. So he's, yeah, he's binging them. So I did issue one thousand through one thousand and six so far. Um, so just starting that train. I have all the way through current over here. So I just want to get them read, get them entered into my database, and get them filed and onto the next stack, which is Power Rangers. Although I'm missing a couple there, so I can't do that until I get those issues. Sure. So that's annoying. Um, but I actually did start reading something recently, and you'll be proud of this. I spoke about it on a. I know I did on a previous video, but Image Comics Monstrous. Um, I just rocked out the volume one. I actually have the other trades, volumes two through four, <laughs> too. So, because I was, it just, it was one of Derek's recommendations from the shop. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that out. And artwork is sexy. Um, the book is just amazing. I mean, it's just perfect for a D and D nerd like me. Um, and so I was very happy with that. I also got. I've been starting to watch Critical Role, uh, Matt Mercer at the ones and twos as the DM, but I got this uh, Vox Machina Origins trade, oh, uh, re recommended nice. uh, through Dark Horse Comics, so technically an indie. Um, <laughs> indie my man, that's definitely an indie. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to reading that too at some point, but I wanted to watch more of the show first so I could have more context uh, on the characters, hoping that they're in the book, because that would be super dope to see your D&D character go into a comic, you know? No, oh. oh, dude, that's really cool, John. Oh, so, man, I'm proud of you, dude. Look at that. you just rocking those indies, that dark horse, that image, getting oh. caught up with Detective. So, nice work, boy. You know. <laughs> that's awesome. So, tell us about this mysterious bundle that you're cradling here. What's happening? Yeah, so, as you can see, I have this big cardboard box, diamond, you know, that's the distributor for comics. Well, um... I was scrolling through um, uh, the internet on Instagram, and I follow Mile High Comics along with tons of other comic book places, and they were having these $20 boxes. They, you know, it was kind of like, we're not going to make a ton of money, but we'll make enough money to keep funds going and, you know, keep our employees employed, and then they'll have something to do. So basically what I did is I bought two of these bundles. So I spent... $40, and these are just mystery bundles. So we are going to open up this mystery package today. Whoopsie. Uh, we can get rid of that. Those comics will be flying in really shortly. Um, so we'll open this mystery package today, and then we're going to just go through the comics, see what if we got any gems, see what kind of garbage we got. You could pay an extra $10 to get, like, all Marvel or all DC, and I definitely didn't want that. So I definitely, these are going to hopefully be some real random ones. This is kind of like, even though Ken's not here, he's here. Oh, with us he here loves that. Because, yeah. you no, know, Ken loves just odd, dumb stuff that nobody really wants to read. And those are Ken's favorite comic books. Um, so hopefully we get some of those. But I'm going to go through it. Um, I got it two day, or I got it yesterday in the mail. And I called John right away and was like, hey, should we do an episode on this? And it was like, <laughs> yes, definitely. And then... I want to say, you know, we are Rainbow Comics hardcore supporters, no doubt about it. But every time I go to Denver, I go to Mile High Comics. It's the biggest comic shop in the world. It's this giant warehouse. It's kind of dirty, and it's not that, uh, you know, uh, spectacular inside. But then, I mean, it is such a, an event. And if you get to Denver, I think as a comic fan, you owe it to yourself to go and check it out. There's just not, I mean, they have like 70 to 100 you know long boxes out of all just like dollar comics or cheaper than dollar comics and i'm sure that's where they pulled these suckers from um so i'm really excited uh to you know support another local or support support not a local to me but a comic shop that i have always supported throughout the years and then also they get to support me by giving me some extremely cheap reads so remember i paid 40 dollars for this entire box um, <laughs> how heavy is it it's heavy, man. It's got to be at least 10 pounds. All right. Pounds or something like that. So, oh, 
Um, when I got home from um, my half day at work on Friday, it was already open. And I was like, oh, they're like, Dad, you got comics. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome. But I was like, how did you guys know there were comics? My kids opened it for me. So I didn't get to actually open the box, but that's okay, guys, because they didn't oh, go any further. So let's... This is awesome. So... <laughs> All right, so we get some packing peanuts. What's the what's the letter on top? Well, okay, let's well, let's take a look. I'll read this. Ooh, this is nice. Attention, parents, they're talking to me. Please note that we are not screening the content of our packs for mature themes. Yeah, boy, that's what I'm talking about. That's a chance we might get some dirty comics in here. We suggest that you screen them before sharing with your children. We're not sharing with any children. It's just me and Johnny here. Boys, we're going deep in. Yep. If you need comics specifically for younger readers, we have a comics code approved package available. No, we don't. We want the dirty stuff. Thank you, Mile High. All right. Here's one pack. And here's oh, the my gosh. Wow. Okay. So get this out of the way here. Wow. That's more than 40. Do you think so? Maybe. Yeah, it I don't think like it could I'm be. Just, I, my computer came unplugged. I was fixing it there for a second, uh, guys. Uh, we'll get it ready here. And, okay, so we got these two packs. I didn't know how they were going to open. It looks like they just use, like, regular old plastic. I got my Michael Myers knife. Yeah, it might be, man. There, there, there's definitely a lot of comics here, so... We'll find it. Oh, well, I get a free comic book day comic on the top. You know, they're not trying that hard. That's okay. <laughs> that's, I think this is our Shay Fontana. You know, that's a super con friend right there. So there you go. we'll get that first one right there. I don't need to put it there. I can put it right there. So there's our, um, that's our first one that, that's right off the top. We'll, we'll open this package second, maybe. So we'll just leave right. this right here. Um, packed up with my Michael Myers knife and let's start going through seeing what we got oh. here all right so um yeah should we do a quick count john should i try it well i'll do it really quick Let's so three four five six seven eight nine eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seven twenty eight twenty two twenty three twenty four Forty-two comics in, on, in just that pack. Yep, exactly. That's, so, and, and total price of the package was twenty dollars. So already, our um, for both of them was forty dollars. So yep. we're going to look at about eighty comics. This one might be thicker, but it looks like shit. I got like graphic novel. I got like a couple mini graphic novels in here. Like, look, book three and book four. So, I don't know. I can't wait to see what that's all about. All right, but we'll stick with this. So, yeah, we're talking already, guys. I went 50 cent a comic on this. So, I if for all the ones that I – and also on Halloween, I love to give out a comic to all the kids with candy. So, this would be great fodder for that for any of the ones I don't want. But first, we're talking Silver Surfer, Along Came a Stranger, issue number 27. It's got that kind of a weirder silver uh, – yeah. uh, um font doesn't it isn't that kind of like a little bit different um than the one that i originally remember i'm gonna move this over so i can still see this too so that's pretty dope um that's a good first issue right there here is that working can you see that is it too glary um for uh just from my perspective it's not coming through at all as an additional camera Oh, it's not? I wasn't sure if you were recording it separately or, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let me see here. It's not. So you cannot see. You can see me right yeah. here at the camera, but you cannot yeah. see this other thing right here coming yeah. here. Well, who knows? We'll see if it'll come through in the recording. Guys, John can't see it. <laughs> uh, maybe it will. Maybe we'll, maybe it won't. So you might be seeing this. You may not. Um, yeah. it looks I can like see it through this view, though, too. So Okay. Good. Yeah, which is oh, good. Sorry. Well, hopefully you guys are seeing a close-up of this shot as well. Um, next up, we got Avengers number 307 to crush an Eternal. Pretty tight cover. 
we got She Hulk. This is so I, I and Namor, Thor, and Captain America as your and Black Panther um, as your and Quasar actually in the corner here too. So that's kind of a fun uh, little um, Avengers comic. That's a uh, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, what year is this from? I'm gonna guess 89, 91. What is your guess? Uh, go 88, 89. 89. John crushed it. So did I. Yep, we both nailed it's it. It's just when you said Kazar, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's when he mattered. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Exactly. Ooh, this one is looking real dumb. Um, we got Everett Hartso's Poison, spelled Ooh. wrong, uh, okay. from London Night Comics. Huh. Ooh, it looks like we got a full spread here, if we wanted to show it. Oh, and then in the classic, you know, a comic book look fan fashion we get that first page a little sneak peek of some under boob but yeah poison um who knows what that is i love it man what is this from this has got to be 99 no 2002 <laughs> i guess oh man it has to be the 90s so 96 yeah, yeah. it's 96 okay. that's amazing <laughs> All right. All right. Next up, we got Mage Knight Stolen Destiny, a little IDW, a little Dominatrix. Um, you know, looks like some kind of a play on uh, Hellboy's style of art. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is this doesn't look like it's too old because it's priced for three dollars and fifty cents, so it can't be that old. Two thousand and two. They were still trying to get three fifty in two thousand two. Man, IDW thinking they're really hitting it. I mean, who wrote this sucker? Maybe it's an artist or writer that we like. Uh, no, never heard of any of them. <laughs> All right. So hashtag, I'm, I'm, hashtag Mage Night. <laughs> yep. Hashtag Mage Night. I'm sure there's a that the creators watching right now and is so pissed at us. Ooh, this one looks kind of cool. We got Future <laughs> Comics number one. The origin of Free Mind begins. Free Mind. What the heck is this, man? I love this. This looks kind of like a little bit of some like European comics or something like that. Nope, Florida. Uh, Florida comics, some sort of indie comic. Um, I'm loving it though. That's great. Uh, Free Minder. All right, what do we got here? Allegum Comics Assassins. What? Esther, Scott McDaniel, and Derek Fisher. Oh, hell no. That's Lady Deathstrike and Electra mix up. <laughs> That's from that that when the DC Marvel U versus. Yes. Oh, yeah. I remember these amalgam. Yeah. That's, this is the Marvel. Okay. Cool. Okay, nice. That's, That's dope. dope. Yeah, it's dope as hell, man. I'll take that if you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going into John's pile. <laughs> hey, all right. I, I, Dude, we get powers. What's this? Which issue is this? Number four. Um, I have the whole series, and I'm a big fan of um, Michael Avon Oming. Oming. He uh, does Mice Templar and some other stuff. We met him at Fables Con. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Powers. Number four. Some uh, Bendis original. That's cool. When did this come out? 2004. Right after me and John were entering college. All right. Dominion. From Image, number one. Oh, this is an Image number one. This might be worth like a billion dollars, guys. Uh, uh, just kidding. Um, we got a real generic looking... Uh, it's a thick book, though. This one? It's yeah. a lot of pages in this one. This was probably pretty spendy when it came out uh, in 2003, January. We got... Oh, it's Keith Giffen did the pencils, so that's pretty cool. And he did the writing. Uh, so it's like a Keith Giffen story... Oh, Ross Ritchie also did the plot and words. So they were co on the plot. All right, that's cool. Whatever. Dominion. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> the Omega Men. This is a dope <laughs> cover, man. I love the. All right. And the long lost return. Okay. So we got the Omega Men revealed at last the fate of Brute's wife. And at long last, return of Primus Eye. I really do like the graphic design of this, though. Um, how it's. Um, Blue on the both sides, and it has the other part on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's pretty dope. Omega Men. All right, Siri, serious comics. The Wandering Star. This is uh, self-published. 
oh. not like if I've ever seen one is totally uh indies indie is all it can be but oh my gosh they it's so indie they're putting pictures of their cat at the back of the comic book that's amazing all right let's burn through some of these blue water comics wrath of the titans that's kind of like a that's a that's a substantial feeling comic we got the countdown to this is a you know ridiculous time in dc's uh (laughs) They were trying to put out weekly books. Um, all right, this this is the kind of shit that Ken would like. Uh, DN Agents, a little oh, yeah. title. It's DNA. It looks fun. It looks like some sort of April O'Neil esque person uh, rocking out on the cover here. Oh hell yeah, Eclipse Comics. And oh, ad advertising for Zot right at the beginning. All right, well this is cool, man. I like that comic. All right. Yeah. What do we got here now? Mm. Simon Dark, bring me the head of Simon Dark. Steve Niles, you know, the horror writer's got a little DC horror book right there. looks like that's pretty cool. Oh, got to clear off my pile here off the mini computer. Hopefully that camera is picking it up. And for the people at home, they're seeing that. If not, we're doing this all for not. And that is going to be classic comic book look. At. <laughs> we adjust. We adapt. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, man. It says that my computer's unplugged again. Give me a second. All right. Okay. There she goes. And it's plugged back in. Thanks, folks. All right. What are we going right into? Yeah, this is another crap comic. I love it. Uh, Poison Elves. Some, you know, black and white indie comic. And it has just like this really big boobed girl on the back. Um, You know, so I guess if you're into that kind of tarot garbage comics, then maybe that's up your alley. All right, uh, Cliffhanger Comics, Crimson. This looks like some... Oh, this is a Wildstorm book. I mean, I don't remember it. Um, I mean, it's a story concepts by Her- Humberto Ramos, Francisco Hedgepack, and Oscar Pinto. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, pencils by Humberto Ramos, so, you know, he's good. That, that's pretty cool. Uh, more than that, though, you get Stone Cold Steve Austin on the back, you know, doing the stunner with that milk ad. Damn, looking good. I'll, I'll leave that milk ad up for this yeah, one. Yeah, you can go and do that. <laughs> All right, what we got here? Creature Commandos, ready to serve. Uh, the famous DC comic Creature Commandos. Just kidding, never heard of it. Um, okay, now we're looking. It's trying to go into a little bit of a, a serious um, look here. This is a Marvel it's kind of laid out like a poster. We got Joe Caseta is doing art on the cover here, which is, this has got to be real old, which is cool. We got John McRae doing the art as well. Doesn't he do art for John McRae, The Boys, or some other book that we know well? Um, and let's see. This looks like a dope comic, actually. Part 5, Get Craven from Ron Zimmerman. Pretty dope looking comic. Yeah, yeah. It's clearly a Spider Man book about, uh, you know, Craven the Hunter, but it looks pretty cool. Another countdown to Crisis. I mean, shoot, I got 44 and 23. Pretty soon I'm going to have that whole run. <laughs> um, this is a weird one. Heavy Hitters, Law Dog. What is this? Some sort of Lobo, I guess, ripoff, maybe Punisher ripoff. Um, but also has, looks like some. It's a satrical thing at the beginning as well. Chuck Dixon wrote it. So um, he, you guys know him from uh, tons of stuff. G.I. Joe, a lot of Army stuff. But that's kind of a weird one. Hmm. Uh, Crossing Midnight. All right. This is cool. This is Crossing Midnight. This is a Mike Carey book from Vertigo. Um, I have heard of this. I've never read it. And that's pretty dope. I read, I'm a big Mike Carey fan, though. I read the entire series of Unwritten. And I'm a big, big fan of that. And he wrote some really good Lucifer tales, some other stuff as well. So that's a dope one. Excited to get that. Got a little Superman, Armageddon 1991. It's pretty sweet. We got Superman, uh, Green Lantern with the, the, you know, that red haired one. I can't remember. What's his name? This guy. Oh, um, not Hal Jordan. Yeah, um, not Jordan, not um, Kyle Rayner. Uh, I mean, come on. Where's Wednesday Comics when you need them? They would have corrected us. Um, 
But yeah, so you know, whatever. A little uh, Superman comics. Bob McCloud, artist. Hey, Bob McCloud. That's a uh, he uh, is a local Midwestern guy. He's been to Rambo Comics before. He was. Uh, I got his autograph at Zambro's actually years back. Guy, Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner. There it is. Uh, I'm with Google, the Google for the win. Yep, he had to grab his assistant. Google. Uh, Valiant, the the visitor. Birthquake, another pun on the title, so that's always fun. <laughs> and a jam, um, <laughs> that, so we're nailing it. Oh, here we go, man. We got a little. This is like another uh, Epic Comics. It's a prestigious format, so I got a little binding here. J. D. Dematis and Kit Williams, Blood, a tale. They really think they're serious here for sure. Ooh, it's like all done with weird watercolors. Um. So this is kind of a, kind of cool. a little bit of a weird book. I'm down. I'm going to check that out for sure. Nice, nice. Okay. Take a peek oh. at that, guys. All right, now we got Kingpin, number two. Wilson Fisk. Wilson Fisk in the cut, Bruce Jones. <laughs> and we got, which is cool on here, is um, the artist. I saw that. It said Phillips. I was like, oh, what Phillips is that? Sean Phillips, one of my favorite artists from... Criminal and a bunch of other books that he did with Ed Brubaker that I read them all. He's doing all the breakdowns. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever read this. Um, I might want to check that one out, actually. That's sweet. So Kingpin question for you. Have you yeah. watched uh, any of like the Daredevil on Netflix? I watched the first season. Yeah. Uh, I watched like, the second half of the second season. I've watched anything. So, or, you know, the first half of the second season I didn't finish up. I kind of fell off and... So all these talks about incorporating good old Dare Dizzy into the MCU, do you think that Kingpin's character will also stand up to big screen? Oh, I think I think um, Kingpin's character will stand up to big screen more than Daredevil will. Really? Yo, yeah, definitely. Vincent De, De, De Fra- our Yeah, De he's is, done a lot, yeah. He's a true actor. He's a character actor. He's been on the big screen a billion times. He yeah. makes me believe whatever he's in. And Matt Murdock. That actor feels like a TV actor. So I guess, yeah, man, I I, I think that would be, if they go to um, Daredevil to the big screen, I actually hope they grab someone else. Cool. Uh, maybe that's a, you know, maybe people won't like that, but <laughs> who knows? Um, well, I got a Howard Chaik and Don Cameron Helix DC Comics book, and um, it looks like some sort of Polaris character at the top. So, you know, I'm going to like this because we got green hair mm-hmm. and, and we got an ad for sliders on the back. <sighs> Cyberella, though. I've never heard of her. You ever heard of Cyberella? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Hell yeah, awesome. man. It's so, she's like some sort of cyber. Her hair is the internet, or the, her hair is the matrix. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> I'll check it out. Her hair's green. Um, all right. The Crusaders Impact Comics. The first issue spectacular. Three impact trading cards inside. Oh, guys, we got to check if these trading cards are still inside. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You need those. You absolutely need those. An absolute must. Yeah. Uh, I should tear those out right now and get them into my collection. For these three famous characters of Fireball, the Black Hood, and the American Crusaders. (laughs) Man, people really were trying their best. They have all have their own logos and name on the cover of this. You guys have to check this out. The Comet, the Web, the Fly, Black Hood, the Shield, the Jaguar. That is <laughs> All right. Um, uh, looks like some spinoff of The Authority. That's that, um, that book, I think, it looks like. I don't know. Advertising Alienware comics on the back. Cool. I mean, computers on the back. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting near the end. I'm going to burn through a few of these. We got DC 1 million. This is a Grant Morrison book. That's actually cool. I've never read that. We got uh, Crucible Impact Comics. Um, Impact Comics from DC. I don't know what that means. Maverick. Blasting from the pages of Wolverine. Yeah of death this is some real 90s stuff when i was picking up hardcore shit i even recognize that character of um x-men early baddies uh mm-hmm. that's really stupid <laughs> all right hey this is great tara obscura and splash tara obscura and splash brannigan 
is this Peter Hogan and Tara Obscura? Is this is dope? America's Best Comics. These are Alan Moore people, right? Peter Hogan took over. Nice, dude. Yeah, I've never read any of these Terra Obscura, but I read all sorts of Tom Strong, which Tom Strong's right on the right at the, at the beginning here, hmm. um, and Promethea and of other Americans' best comics. Oh, cool. Oh, this isn't even like a comic. It's like a. That's what I was gonna ask. Was this just like the history or? Yeah, it's definitely like the history. Oh, that's funny. This is like one of those dumb kind of comics that you get for free. All right. <laughs> Ah, Flint disgraced as Dark Stars. Oh, man, who did this cover? It is like some Liefeld ripoff stuff. I love it, man. Flint disgraced from Dark Stars. Got to find out. Give me one second. Let me get this cover. Didn't tell me. Maybe it is still pink. pink. Travis Cheris. Never heard of him, but loving it. All right. No feet. Oh. All right, All Star Superman number one for free. This is a, one of the best comics ever. This is a reprint, but I mean, All Star uh, Superman number one is such a good comic book. That's a great, great one. All right, this kind of is cool. The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles number one, oh, and then cool. this like cool Egyptian cover. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That was awesome. All right, Paradam or Paradigm. I mean, I said it wrong. Who gives a shit from Image? Comics, uh, yeah, it looks doesn't look that great. Uh, we got Fire from the Heaven, Sigma, Chapter 6, Image, some more Image garbage. Ooh, this is kind of cool. Wildstar, number one from Image. It's got a, you know, silvery cover and then, like, a matte background. Uh, you know, it seems pretty dumb. I'll put it in John's pile. Because <laughs> of the shiny cover? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we got Wasteland. This is suggested for... Um, mature readers written by Del Close and John Astrander. Really? Del Close, isn't he the um the improviser? The guy who like invented improv, or is he a writer? Oh, that's kind of interesting. Wasteland. I'll have to check that one out. That's kind of cool. And then our very last one is the hood number one. Um, I think this is during Dark Rain. Yes. This is great. And which Parker wrote this? Jeff Parker? I want to find out. I want to know. <laughs> Tell me your secrets. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> oh man, I guess I'll never I guess we'll never find out. I'm moving on. Who, who done so, it? Yep. All right, guys. That was the first package. That went way too long. I'm going to go way faster on this one. But that was fun, wasn't it, John? I mean, yeah. I, honestly, Tom, I think that it's time to be honest with them about what package you got. Because when you throw a Dark Rain title, it at least doubles in cash value. I know, exactly. <laughs> I could sell that Dark Hood the Rain book for $100 on its own. Exactly. Yeah, right. Fucking Dark Rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one, it doesn't look like we quite have 40 comics in this one because they're a lot thicker ones. So let's just count them. One, two, three. Yeah, these are like graphic novels. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. All right, 37 comics. Well, I'm going to go through them a lot quicker this time. We're close to 80 comics. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely cheap Woo. reading. A lot of fun to go through this. I mean, I'll have a lot of fun giving this shit out. Um, you know, <laughs> finding places, giving them as joke uh, gifts. And then also just reading them, uh, throwing a stack of these next to the old shitter. <laughs> You work right through them. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Continuous Comics Armor. This kind of has a weird feel. It's like, uh, I don't know. It Rainy. definitely, yeah, it's has like magazine quality innards, but this kind of weird emboss. Oh, it's because it's like embossed. Like it's sticking out. I don't know. It's weird, but whatever. Who knows? We'll go, We'll start here. Armor. I, I can see this goddamn camera, so I'm pretty sure it works. I mean, okay. I, hopefully, someone in the end is seeing this. You know, there, there you go. Right, comic 
uh, bombast number one, never been open, got the card in back right there. Um, mm-hmm. We got Savage Dragon on the back. I'm sure this is was the biggest uh, comic book of all time. You get a Kirby Chrome edition of Secret City. Oh, shit, man. Guest starring Savage Dragon. And this is a Jack Kirby book, man. Jack Kirby made this. Maybe hmm. in his super later years. Look, Jack Kirby on the bottom. Hmm. Um, so it's a Topps book by Jack Kirby. I'm actually, I think that's really cool. I'm going to actually set this one aside in a different pile where I want to actually keep that one. That's sweet. All right, Badger, first comics. This is, yeah, who knows what the hell that is. You guys take your own pick of that. No idea. Uh, Ape City. It's a Planet of the Apes miniseries. Oh, that's cool. Who hmm. would have thunk? In, uh, in plastic, so it must be uh, worth Shout out something. to Cornelius. Yeah, <laughs> Cornelius, what are you doing, man? Let's get it, be a good leader. <laughs> this is... This should this is the kind of crap that's gonna go in like um uh Ken's pile. I mean this is this is who knows what I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> that's totally Ken's then. <laughs> yeah. Whatever this is. Oh funny. It has a Metallica uh ad on the back though, which is weird. All right. Uh, I think that says stick boy number four. Oh. Um Ken, that's all yours, my man. All right, here we go. Biographics, contemporary biographics of Boris Yeltsin. I have uh, a biographical comic of Boris Yeltsin. Um, uh, John, who is Boris Yeltsin? Um, I have no idea. I have no idea either. I don't <laughs> have a clue. Who Should Boris I Google him? I think you, yeah, can you Google him quick? I th- he's the last or the least American hero. Uh oh, um, Russia, a, a Russian politician, Soviet politician who served as the first president of Russia from 1991 to 1999. How dumb! I can't believe they. I mean, some sort of weird political comic. This will go in Ken's file as well. I mean, who the hell knows what that is? <laughs> okay, Transformers Generations. This is this looks cool. This is a good. Oh, it's a but it's a reprint from like the 80s. Uh huh. That's funny. Bait and switch. Uh, Ultra Klutz, Onward Comics. This looks like some really indie nonsense, but whatever. That's Amazing Heroes. Wow. Never never been is Oh, this is a magazine. So it's uh, a magazine on comics. It looks like a bunch of interviews and write-ups on different comic stuff from the 80s, I'm sure. Let's see when this is talking about. I don't know. It's got to be. Oh, November 87. November of 87, so that's kind of weird. All right. Atom- or I think it's Atomic Angels. <laughs> that's a real that's random. A, that's a keeper. Alien Nation. The First Comers. Adventure Comics. This Alien Nation is a movie... And it's a really kind of bad, uh, a really bad sci-fi movie. But can we talk about the mullet in the back though for a second? Yeah, <laughs> that's look at the size of these bangs, guys. And then look, I'll the put mullet. It, bangs and then mullet. Man, that is just it's it's like <laughs> Carol Baskin's <laughs> exotic in the early days, man. No oh, shit, dude. It is like Carol Baskin's. All right, that bitch. <laughs> Um, a story in four parts. First published in Twilight Man. This is kind of like something kind of a little bigger. First fiction volume number one. I'm sure it was never finished, but it uh, looks like some sort of fantasy adventure um, throwback love story. Who knows? Twilight Man. Okay. The Twilight Zone. Jeffrey Lang and Tony Harris. Holy shit. Is this artist Tony Harris? I think it is, my friends. This it may have found a gem, illustrated by Tony Harris and Lennon Delsol. Yes, oh yeah, and you can tell this is this is a good art right away here, guys. Um, Tony Harris is a I'm a big fan of his work from Starman. Um, I have the entire run, and I've never heard of this book, so I feel like I just found a gem right there. All right, John Byrne. Um, you know, 
of everybody that everybody knows. It looks like he's writing Angel Blood and Trenches, you know, the Buffy verse. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! There must be throwing these in every one of them. John, this is we've already got this a double. One. Yeah, Magic Knight, Stolen Destiny. Got two of them. That, one means that you just gotta read it. Yep, that means it's a sign. I have to read it. Ah, Blood of the Innocent weekly miniseries. Some really. Oh, that's kind of a cooler. Oh yeah, no, never mind. It is crap. Right here. <laughs> this looks dope though. Twisted Tales uh, has this crazy um, dinosaur on the cover, and that artist is. Oh, I don't have it here anymore. I gotta look at this. Is I the, he does. Richard Corbin art. Yes. Okay, this is a dope comic. He, This Richard Corbin guy, he does uh, horror comics really, really well. Um, and he still does stuff from time to time for Dark Horse. But I think awesome. that's really, really cool. Um, it's in this, this comic's in piss poor shape. But, I mean, you know, I don't care at all. I'm really, really excited. This is, this is a really cool book for me. All right, with some old school Richard Corbin from the 90s. Okay. Oh, I should probably put that here. Sorry. Uh, Ascension, Top Cow Image, number eight. Um, Daniel Finch or something like that. All right, Christian Comics, Crux. Mark Wade, Steve Epting. That's funny. Mark Wade, um, we know, everybody knows, one of the biggest comic writers of all time. Steve Epting, famous for writing or drawing Captain America forever. Yeah. He's come with a Christian comic. So it's cool to see some of those creators before they were rocking and rolling, or maybe they were just getting paid highly there. Uh, Xenoscope, 1001 Arabian Nights, um, you know, not my shit. Uh, Tamo, Crusade Comics, I don't know, somebody tried to get five bucks for it at some point, idiots. <laughs> uh, Robotech, I, I got a bunch of these Robotech comics, I'm a big fan of that. Um, you know, in the Macross saga and stuff like that, that's all real cool to me. What is, is Robotech isn't, has nothing to do with Robocop or anything, right? The font just looks similar. Um, yeah, it's not. It it's, uh, comes from like Gundam and Macross, like anime oh, okay. and stuff like that. Okay. And then, um, and then Robotech was like a spinoff of that, or the American version of that, or something. I don't remember. Got Bad it. Axe, though. I've never. I don't know what this is on the. Hmm. Just like some nonsense black and white indie comics, uh, fantasy, sword and sorcery. Strangers in Paradise, number thirteen. It's a great comic book. Uh, Chaos, Prince of Madness, Warp Special. That's oh, got a little sexy demon on the cover here. Oh, thank you. And then uh, Boa. This is kind of like another one of those uh, prestigious format. It's like thick. It might be an anime or manga, excuse me. Yeah, it looks like kind of a manga, maybe a Western style manga. Um, Oh, no. It's written by a Japanese guy. That's awesome. Yeah, 1984, um, published by Viz. So who knows? That's kind of cool. I'll check that out for sure. And it's and it's like a graphic novel format. Uh, Adventure number one. It's got a dope cover. Looks like just some reprints of old black and white stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. Presented by Takuro Shobin and Viz Comics. Story by Yoshina Tagami. Gray, number seven. And it's like a full manga graphic novel. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right, Spencer Spook. Um, this may not fly in 2020. You can't call people spooks anymore, guys. That's like racist. Uh, in the Kremlin Caper. So it's like some sort of Russian. Yeah, it's some sort of another Russian take of comics. I don't know. We're getting a lot of a lot of Russian stuff coming up here. What What are you trying to sell me on here, Mile High Comics? Huh? <laughs> Okay, Shadow Man, number one, from Delano. That's pretty cool. Star Trek Deep Space Nine, number Hello. one. How you doing? Boom. Uh, this is cool, though. It has the Super Advantage controller on the <laughs> because back. Because losing sucks. Yes. I'll show that on the back, you guys. Because, oh, my God. But then also, this is a dope um, cover. And then we got Vengeance of Vampirella, when it was from... So Vampirella from Harris Comics. 
so I know Dynamite took over this. So this is kind of different. Um, that's cool, though. And then here we got these graphic novels. So the first one is Book Four for Mature Readers, Pariah Press, The Score, written by Gerard Jones and Mark Badger. Um, it's like a, looks like, you know, late 90s. They thought they were trying to be uh, Neil Gaiman. Um, so now we got the Essential Star Child Book Four. This is, I got two of these. So I got book three and book four of the Essential Star Child. I don't know anything about it. Uh, it has a um, Bill Willingham from Fables right up on the back and a John Lehman who's from Chew right up on the back. So maybe this is actually, this could be good. I don't know. And Brian Talbot. I mean, these are good people are writing about this, but I've, I've never heard of it. The Essential Star Child. Have you ever heard of this, John? I have not. Yeah. Looks like... Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. But they look kind of cool. So they must be cheap. Maybe I have to find uh, issues one and two. DC Nation number zero, the summer start of events. This is one of those like free books usually that they give out. And that is my books, Johnny. So That is an impressive haul, though. Holy smokes. No doubt about it. We had fun. We got a bunch of crappy, fun comics. <laughs> had a, a good time was had by all. I think all. it's it's still a cool variety, though. Um that's interesting. You know, I I wonder how many they sold. Yeah, me too. Well, and, I'd be curious and, to know. You know. Whatever else, I I don't know if they're still going on, but uh, um, it's always fun to get a bunch of random comics. I love hitting up the dollar wall. I do it every time I'm at Rainbow. I love getting cheap, dumb comics. I love going to cons and just getting a bunch of cool comics. Um, I would say overall, out of eighty comics, I was excited probably about eight of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I got a 10% chance of being excited. And, you know, I am very excited, though, to have all these random silly comics. It's always fun for me to flip through and go through. So I'm going to have even more fun when I get to uh, thumb through all these, read a few of these, throw a couple of these, use a couple of coasters, and uh, not give a shit either way, since I got so many. Boom. So cool. There it is, John. Um, anything else you got for the people? You know, I'll lift up my sins as well. So I was naughty and did a comic book auction <laughs> online, which was a lot of fun. So first of all, my first score here, I've never seen uh, Jean Grey look hotter. Yeah. Um, but it's like her Venom. Uh, She's badass. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Like, it was just a badass cover. And I was like, yes, I will definitely take that. And then I actually love, I just have been really on this X-Men kick, you guys. And so I've got a couple of old issues here. Um, so this is X-Men issue 25, um, which is just banging, banging artwork. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I know it's like the glare is like horrible. but No, I know what it looks like. <laughs> X-Men 25. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, that is insane, John. I can't wait. I want to hold that thing. That is so cool, dude. Uh, X-Men 34. What? Um, oh, my God. And then X-Men 37. So I treated myself to just some gems. Um, and it was fun. Like, the format of the... What was it? I said, holy shit. Yeah. Awesome. Those are such cool comics. Stan Lee originals. Man, are you kidding me? That's dude. Tough. Oh, my God so jealous <laughs> but i'm stoked to read them like that's one thing too with the auctions that i noticed is that people freak out the moment that you put up a cgc one like when they're in the slab and i just i don't bid on them and i told the guy on the side i'm like i'm not bidding because i don't do i don't i want to read them you know i want to hold them and oh, like cool. look at the art and stuff i don't want to so the only cgc book i have is that alpha flight avengers variant cover over there um but other than that i don't own any slabs so yeah, I've I've never slabbed the book. I've never bought a slab yet. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a day where I do, but um, I same with me. The gold is on the inside. Yeah. Just be very careful when you're going through those gold because those are pieces of history, John. Especially with you know those guys not being around anymore. Man, keep keep hold of that. That's so cool that you got those comics, man. So jealous. I'm just on a mission, man. I want to complete that Uncanny Volume One. Um, but that's like over 500 issues. So, um, I got my work cut out for me. That's for sure. But, uh, yeah, man. Well, yeah, you'll just keep nick chunking away at it year after year. Yep. 
Well, cool, man. All right. Well, thanks for going through uh, all these giant piles of comics. It was super fun. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, thanks, John. Definitely. Well, you guys, thank you so much for rocking out with Tom and I. I hope you guys are having a fabulous weekend. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at Sign a Comic Book Look, at Sign Tom Stew Divine, and at Sign John on Demand. Or just uh, if you're already part of our Facebook group, awesome. If not, feel free to check us out at Comic Book Look. Easygoing community, lots of fun and randomness, and full of delights. Uh, but, anyways, you guys know the drill is always keep it awesome and keep it comics for sure, man. Boom. I totally just stole Sergeant America's boom like last year and just did it. Yeah, well, we have to do boom. I mean, if Sarge isn't here, we got to do you know keep him alive. Yeah, keep the legend alive. Yeah, <laughs> I miss you, Sarge. Sarge, we love you. <laughs>